Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad to be here. Uh, you understand that most people who have physical symptoms have not made a, any connection between the mind and the body. Even those people who have made a connection between the mind and the body aren't here because they haven't taken the step of saying, I'm willing to do what's necessary to get rid of my pain. I'm willing to do what's necessary to get rid of my symptoms. I'm willing to take this step. And it's precious few people who are willing to do that. You are among them. Uh, so that's why I'm glad to be here. That's why I'm privileged to be able to speak to you about this. The, uh, the work that we're doing is a three-part class, as you know. First class consists of the, the talk, this lecture that I'm going to give you, and then we're going to break into uh, the exercises, the workshop part of the session, where you're going to do the work. Most of the people who come through this class get better. Most of the people get better, sometimes quickly, sometimes a little bit more slowly, sometimes over time, but most people do quite well. Even some of the people I have been able to follow up, finally I hear from them a few months later and they say, oh yeah, by the way, I'm doing great. And, and, I, never even, and I never even knew that. Um, the work is based on the work of Dr. Sarno and I've worked with him and uh, he he blesses this class, and he knows what we're doing here. And uh, so I'm going to go into the talk. The reason that I call it tension, a lot of people call it different names. I continue to call it tension myositis syndrome because that's what Dr. Sarno calls it. And that's the, the term he coined about 30 years ago when he started this program at NYU in New York City. And uh, so I continue to call it that. A uh, variety of people have different names for it. We call it the mind-body syndrome. Uh, some people call it psychosomatic. Some people don't like that term. They call it the P word. Oh, you shouldn't use that term. Uh, but psychosomatic just means that the, the mind affects the body. The people who have it aren't crazy. How do I know that? Because I'm not crazy, and I have it. So what is TMS, tension myositis syndrome? It's a medical diagnosis. It needs to be made by doctors. The people in this room, I've examined you or I've talked to you, you know that you don't have any serious medical condition. People who may be seeing this online need to be checked by their doctor or need to be assured that they're healthy, that there's nothing seriously wrong. And that's why we can do this work. And that's why medical doctors need to do this work. The pain or the symptoms that you have and that I have at times are very real. They're not imaginary. They're not in your head. They're not an illusion. But they're, and they're caused in, they're in the body, but the source and the perpetuation of the symptoms are in the mind. And understanding that and accepting that is the most important thing that I can convey to you and the first step to getting better. What is TMS not? It's not malingering. It's not just stress. It's our reaction to the stress. It's nothing to do with being crazy or incompetent, as I mentioned before. It's not secondary gain. It's not because you want to be sick. And it's not imaginary. Symptoms are real. They can be extremely severe. And that's what most of us don't really understand and doctors don't understand. How can pain or symptoms be that severe, but yet not be a serious medical problem and still be caused by the reaction that we have in our minds. That's the amazing thing. I've been a doctor for 30 years. For 28 of those years, I had no idea that this could be the case, that, this, that these symptoms could be so prominent and yet get better so quickly. And that's the beauty of this is that once you understand this and work with it, you can get better almost overnight. Not always, but often. We have current epidemics in our society, and they've been made worse over time. Low back pain, 
fibromyalgia, which began in 1971 when a group of doctors got together and codified it and said, okay, this is what it consists of. And then it begins to take a life of its own, as we'll see. Carpal tunnel syndrome. How come we didn't have so much carpal tunnel when people were typing really fast on these big typewriters and now we're just moving our fingers with the, with the computer keyboard and now we have much more carpal tunnel than we had then? It doesn't make sense. All the headache syndromes we have, the irritable bowel syndrome, the stomach pain syndrome, the pelvic pain, interstitial cystitis is a new thing, right? I didn't have it when I went to medical school, never heard of it. And all of a sudden, we have these epidemics of young people having urgency and difficulty with bladder function in young people. Why all of a sudden? Again, it doesn't make sense. And it's really instructive to understand the history of mind-body medicine or the history of psychosomatic medicine. And when you look at the history you look at the 1600s and the 1700s, people would frequently have paralysis. People would frequently have seizures that were due to mental stress. These, and we know this by looking at the history. And there's a great couple books written about the history of this. In those days, it was considered that these were real. These were organic problems. And when medicine and and as medicine progressed, those went away. Now we very rarely have someone who gets paralysis or, or seizures due to stress, due to the reaction to stress. And that doesn't happen nowadays because doctors know that it's not true paralysis. We have the testing. We have the examination to prove that it's not paralysis. And our minds choose to have syndromes that are real. Nobody wants to be thought of as crazy. Nobody wants to be thought of as uh, having, and that's why the P word, the psychosomatic word, is pejorative. That's why people don't like it. Does that make sense to you? Do you understand what I'm saying? The unconscious mind will choose a syndrome which is very real, and it will choose syndromes which run in families. If headaches run in your family, you're more likely to get headaches. Uh, I was talking to someone the other day who was having had had a history of neck pain. And his father had a history of neck pain. And that's how the mind works. So nowadays, we don't have paralysis and what they used to call hysterical seizures. Now we have pain syndromes. And Dr. Charcot, famous doctor, one of the most famous doctors in history in France, set up, he had a hospital where he studied uh, people and he uh, studied multiple sclerosis and syphilis and strokes and things like that. But he also had a large number of people with mind-body disorders or psychosomatic disorders in his clinic in France. And what he did, he started categorizing these, these disorders. So he said, oh, these people come in, and they were often young women who were you know, relatively healthy, and they would come in, and they would have, and he would say, oh, then they get these funny sounds in their throat, and then they would get these seizures, and then they would get this pain here. And he would write it all down, and pretty soon everybody started having that. It was contagious. He wrote it down, he expected it, and that's what happened. Somebody would come in who was new who didn't have those symptoms. He would tell them. He would expect that they would have them because he would see. He would have it all written down, and then they would develop them. Does, that, does you understand what I'm saying? It's amazing how these things are basically contagious, and the mind produces them. Uh, and so what's happened in the, in the last hundred years it's really shifted from paralysis to pain. That's why we have so much back pain. You know, we have more back pain in this country than in developing countries where people are doing much more heavy, heavy lifting, much more heavy labor. We have more back pain. And so nowadays, and fatigue, because no one can prove you don't have, you're not tired. No doctor can prove you're not, that we're not tired. No doctor can prove we don't have pain. And so the mind chooses those things now to make sure that it's real because we don't want to be thought of as being crazy. That would be the last thing we would want to happen. But it all happens on an unconscious level, and that's what we're going to get into.